In this video, we're going to look at how you manage the storage and retention period for log data in SAS via monitoring for Kubernetes. We'll see how to find the total size of the storage that's provisioned for your log data. We'll see how to calculate the actual size of your log data altogether or for a single day. And finally, we'll see how to find the current log data retention period and how to change it. You may notice that the log monitoring part of this project has a new name. Um, OpenSearch Dashboards is the new log monitoring application with SAS via monitoring for Kubernetes version 1.2.0 and later. But in practice, it's just like Kibana. The layout is basically the same and all the functionality that you had in Kibana is still there. Um, the main differences you'll probably spot first are the new name and the color scheme. So with that out of the way, let's talk about log data storage. Our project deploys OpenSearch dashboards with a stateful set for OpenSearch that has three pods in it. And each of those three pods, uh, here they are, has got its own PVC. So that means three OpenSearch pods, therefore there are three PVCs for OpenSearch, and you can see those here in OpenLens. Each PVC um, is 30 gigabytes in size by default and uses the default storage class. So um, in my case here, that's NFS client, which is okay for a demo, but you'd probably want something better in a production cluster. Because OpenSearch distributes the data it stores between these pods, they collectively provide about 90 gigabytes or so of storage with those defaults. And if you prefer, you can see the same thing using kubectl. So we'll use kubectl get PVC in the logging namespace. Uh, my namespace is v4m log here, but the default namespace is just logging. So if we run that command, you can see the PVCs. And again, we're seeing the same information. They're 30 gigabytes in size, and they're using my default storage class, which here is NFS client. So how do we find out how much data OpenSearch is actually storing? There are a couple of ways. One is to look at the files in those PVCs. How you do that depends on the storage class, and I only have NFS here, but at least that means I can find the files in the underlying file system on the NFS server. For other storage classes, you can probably do something similar. The other way should work for everyone. In OpenSearch dashboards, you can add up the total size of all of the individual indices. So if we scroll down and go to Index Management, and click on indices, let's make this bigger, then we can look at the total size column for each index that uh, OpenSearch is currently storing and manually add those up. Well, you can do it manually, but if you're going to do it more than once, it's going to be a lot quicker to copy this table into Excel and calculate the total size there. So what we'll do before we copy it is just make sure that we're showing the maximum possible number of rows per page and we'll scroll down again and just check to see if that still leaves us with multiple pages. In this case, it does. So I'm going to need to make sure I copy the data from both pages. So let's scroll back up to the top and I'm going to press my mouse button down here and select all of the data in this table and copy that. And then I'm going to open Excel. So that's the data from the first page, and let's go and get the data from the second page as well. So back here in OpenSearch Dashboards, click on page number two for the next page. All of the data we want to copy is already highlighted, so I'm going to press Control c again, and we'll paste that back into Excel below the previous set of data. And then it includes a couple of header rows here, so I'll just select those two rows and delete those. So now we can use some formulae to get the um, total size in kilobytes for each index in this data. In this first column for units, what we're doing is looking at the right hand two characters or the rightmost two characters of the value in column F here, which is the total size, and um, keeping those in this cell. So that allows us to tell whether we're looking at a value in kilobytes or megabytes. In this next column, um, then we're taking all of the characters in that cell um, apart from the right hand two most characters uh, so we get the value but without the units on the end and then finally in this last column if 
we have megabytes in the units column, then we're going to multiply the value by 1024 to turn it into kilobytes. Otherwise, we'll just take the value as it is because it's in kilobytes. So let's copy those so that we've got that for all of the columns in the table and then we'll skip down to the bottom of the table and we can uh, go below this column here and hold down alt equals uh, which is an excel shortcut to sum all of the rows above and that will give us a total size for all of this data in kilobytes and then i'm just going to um, convert that into megabytes and gigabytes And gigabytes just because those are slightly more um, useful metrics so we'll take the value above divided by 1024 and do the same thing again and that'll give us a total of about 2.17 2.18 gigabytes of total data currently being stored once you have done that for all of your data you have a fairly good total size for the log data currently stored in um, open search and we'll call that tab total Incidentally, if you're using an older version of uh, SAS file monitoring for Kubernetes, which is using Elasticsearch rather than OpenSearch, you can do the exact same thing. Um, it works in exactly the same way in Elasticsearch. You can also filter the indices to find the log data for a single UTC day. Now, filtering on today's date won't give you a representative size for a full day because today isn't finished yet. So instead, let's start with yesterday's log data. So um, I happen to be recording this on the 20th of October 2022. So for yesterday's date in the search box up here, I'm going to type 2022 asterisk 10 for October and then 19 because that's yesterday. And that will filter the data in the table to just show me indices for yesterday. And there are there's only one page of these. There's a much smaller number. So if we copy and paste this data, whoops, I just want the column headings. Um, if we copy and paste that into a new tab in Excel, we'll be able to do the same thing, but just to calculate the total size for uh, one day's worth of data. So let's paste that data in here. And then I'm going to copy the formulae that we've already used on the previous worksheet and paste those into the new one for October the 19th for yesterday's data and just visually check that they seem to be doing what they should. So that's picking up the right column. So is that, so is that, looks okay. And now we can total the columns. So we'll get a total size in kilobytes by pressing Alt equals to sum all of the rows above. And then I'm going to just copy and paste the rest of the formulae from the bottom of this table, which um, give us everything else that we need. So let's copy those labels and we'll just copy these two cells because they will divide the numbers above them by 1024. So it looks like we've got about, let's make that slightly bigger, we've got 0 0.38, 0 0.39 gigabytes worth of data per day. Just so we don't get confused, let's label that tab as well. Okay, so we have a total size for all of the data and a total size for one day. What you might want to do is repeat the process of getting the total size of data for a single day for several different days. And that will allow you to see how much the size of your log data varies from day to day. Um, and then you can take an average and also get some sense of its variability. So for example, if you know your cluster was busier or quieter than usual on one particular day, you could take that into consideration. In extrapolating out how much space you should allow for a day's log data, I would allow plenty of headroom for the system being busier or for times when you might increase the level of log detail for some of your services. And then taking all of that into account, you can now choose a reasonable amount of space per day to allow and divide your total storage space by that amount to estimate the number of days worth of log data you could keep. But we'll come back to the log retention period in a bit. First, I want to look at the other method to measure the total size of all of your log data by looking at the underlying files. So we can try to find the underlying files behind these PVCs and add up their size. And again, the way that you do this is going to be highly dependent on the type of storage class being used to provision these V4M search pods PVCs. But again, we can see what we've got here in my environment, it's NFS client. So I should be able to find the folders somewhere on the NFS server that, that uh, back those files. 
And in my environment, I found that they actually happen to be on the same machine that I'm running this uh, interface on. That is highly unusual, but we could do ls minus al of this file system path. And that just so happens to match all of the file systems. And then there's a, a deep directory structure underneath this nodes folder that um, all of the files that we're interested in uh, getting the size of lie somewhere underneath these three directories. Other storage classes will work differently, but one way or another, you should be able to find the size of the underlying files without too much difficulty. In my environment, I can then run a command something like this to add up the total size of all of the files in those directories. So it's looping through each of the directories matching that wildcard pattern. And for each one with sudo, so it can run as um, a, a root user, um, it will do a du minus xs. And that will calculate the disk usage of all of those files, and sudo ensures that we're getting all of them. And then it will report the results back out. So running that, we get a total size, and checking the manual pages, that is in kilobytes for each of those three directories. So all we need to do then is add up the size of those three PVCs, and we should have a total. So since Excel is open, let's do that in Excel. We can copy those three uh, lines of output, and then switch back to Excel. And in our total tab, let's find a bit of space here at the bottom and paste in those results. And then I can just use another formula to um, get the value out of the left-hand side of that expression. So why don't we paste the formula here? And then this cell that we're going to be looking for is that one there. And so K82, it says, let's just make sure that's being used in both half of the formula. And now we've just got the value being extracted out of that. And again, we can put the cursor here, alt equals will sum up those totals. And now we can convert that answer, which is at the moment in kilobytes, into megabytes and gigabytes. Now, what we see here is really interesting. The value for the total files being stored in the file system here is significantly higher than the total size of all of the indices that OpenSearch is reporting to us. I don't know exactly what all of those additional files are, but I suspect that there is some data being cached, perhaps some query results already being cached in the OpenSearch PVCs. And there is, of course, going to be some overhead for storage of visualizations and dashboards. But I would imagine that the majority of that additional data, the difference between this value here and there, is probably taken up by data caching. So that's a really interesting result, and it's very important to know about this, because although we do have an accurate estimate for how big our log data is, we can clearly see that some additional space is being used just internally by OpenSearch as it does its work. And you don't have to do that in Excel, of course. You can do it in Bash. So if we switch back to our environment here, we can run the same command that we run before, um, but just with a little bit of extra uh, stuff on the end of it. So let's, um, why don't I go back here a little bit and just explain what's happening here. So I've just added an extra pipe into the uh, results of the du command so that it just outputs the first value. So there we're just getting the value in the first column out from that. And then I'm passing that through a paste command, which will take each of those successive values and paste them onto a single line in a sort of serial fashion. Uh, with a plus symbol as the delimiter. Um, so that will paste the uh, result onto a single line. <clears throat> and then that makes a mathematical expression that we can uh, pass through to the basic calculator in Bash and produce a single result. So that is giving us a total size in kilobytes of those three files. Um, and then, of course, in kilobytes, that's great, but you might want to convert that to megabytes. So we'll add a little bit of extra code onto the end of this so that we um, divide that result by 1024, pass it through the basic calculator again, and then we'll print it out with a little M after it to show us that the results, that result is in megabytes. Or we can do something like this to convert the result to gigabytes. And again, I'll put all of these formulae. So we can see we're getting about 4.0 gigabytes here in Bash compared with, well, basically the same 4.1 even there in um, Excel. So um, we should be getting the same number. It's the same calculation with the, the same input numbers. So again, what we're seeing is that the total space being used by those PVCs or used in those PVCs is probably a better indication of whether or not we have enough empty space available to increase our log retention period. So 
What is the log retention period? Well, going back to open search dashboards, we can go to the managed indices page and we'll see for each of the indices, there is a log retention policy listed next to it. And if we click on any one of these, we can see that that policy keeps the data in a hot state. That means it's available until it's reached a minimum age of, in this case, six days before which it would be changed into a doomed state. Now the default period here is three days. I've increased my retention period to six days for the purposes of this demo. Okay, so let's recap. We now know how to find out how big the OpenSearch PVCs actually are. We've got three times 30 gig for 90 gig in total, which is the default. We know how much log data is stored in them, both in total and per day, because we were able to sum that up as it was reported in OpenSearch dashboards indices page. And we also know the total size of all the files OpenSearch is currently storing in those PVCs. And we notice that this can be quite a lot bigger than just the reported size of the log data alone. We also finally know how many days that OpenSearch is keeping our log data for. Now that's three days by default again, but I've increased my total to six days here for the purposes of being ready for this video. So that should be enough information for us to be able to choose a new log retention period that will fit within the available free space in those PVCs. So let's see how you do change that log retention period. The way to do that is go to the index policies tab where we can see these two policies are defined. We'll click on the via logs index management policy and then click edit. It gives us a choice of two editors and the visual editor is really nice, but I'm going to use the JSON editor because I'm slightly more familiar with it. And it's also slightly quicker and works the same way here as it would do in Elasticsearch. So here, if we go down to the define policy section, let's just make that a bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. We can change the six days period into five days. So that will reduce the number of days where uh, for which the data is being kept. And I'm going to click update and we'll see that the index management policy has been updated. But we aren't quite done yet. If you want your changes to this policy to apply to existing indices, you need to reapply the policy to them. And the trick is that it's not that obvious that you need to do that. If we go back to the index, uh, the managed indexes page and click on the index management policy next to one of our logs indices, it's going to show us the new retention period already, but it's not true. In fact, the previous retention period of six days still applies to this index until we reapply the index management policy to it. So what we're going to do, and we can do that for all of these indices in one go, we can click the change policy button. So I'm going to click in the managed indices text box and type via underscore logs and a dash. And then we'll choose via underscore logs dash asterisk from the suggested answers below that. Um, so you don't need to type the asterisk, it does that for you. Then we'll scroll down to choose new policy. And from the new policy dropdown, I'm going to choose the via logs index management policy. Make sure that you pick the right one. Then we'll click the change button down in the bottom right hand corner. And it tells us that it changed the policy on 48 indices. The number of indices you get in your message might be slightly different to mine. Now you're really done. If you reduce the index management period, you should start to see some indices being moved from the hot state into the doomed state within the next few minutes. It doesn't happen immediately. And then Within maybe the next five or 10 minutes, any indices that are too old to be retained under the new policy should be deleted. And you should also at that time see that the disk space is beginning to free up too. And that's it for this video. Now you know how to manage the storage and retention period for log data in SAS via monitoring for Kubernetes. Please do let me know in the comments if this has been a useful video. And for more SAS via tips and tricks, take a look at the other videos in the SAS technical insights and expertise series, and watch out for more videos from me on log monitoring with SAS via monitoring for Kubernetes.